Okay, suppose that you have the following uh, problem. You have two polynomials, one that we're going to call p of s, which is s squared plus 4s plus 8, and another polynomial, which we'll call q of s, is equal to s plus 1. Um, and then what you're being asked to do is to find a few different things in MATLAB using this. All right, so uh, part A says I want to multiply p by q. Um, Part B says I want the poles and zeros of Q over P. And C says I want P of minus 1. All right? So uh, that's exactly what we're going to show you how to do in MATLAB uh, right now. All right. So we can start by first defining P. And we're going to define P actually as a vector. And P in this case is going to be 1, 4, 8. All right? That corresponds to uh, 1s squared plus 4s plus 8, which is exactly what we had written before. All right, then we're going to define q as 1 comma 1. That corresponds to s plus 1. All right, and then the first thing we want to do is find uh, p of s times q of s. All right, I'm just using a comment to denote uh, what we're doing. All right, and uh, what we want to do then is uh, take the convolution command to find the multiplication between them. All right, so this is going to be uh, CONV of P comma Q. All right, and we should get the answer here, uh, which if you check by hand, you'll see that that actually is the correct multiplication between them. All right, so... Next, we want to find the poles and zeros of q over p. And we're going to do this by first defining a transfer function. Let's call this g is equal to the transfer function, df, of q comma p. All right, and I'll hit enter, and you'll see that it appears s plus 1 over s squared plus 4s plus 8. It's a continuous time transfer function. And then I want to find the poles and zeros of this. All right, so what I can do is find the poles by using the command pole, P-O-L-E, of G. And you'll see that that returns the poles. I can similarly uh, find the uh, zeros by using the command zero of G. All right, and the zero is at minus one. Uh, another additional thing which uh, isn't necessary for uh, the question that was asked but is a nice little tool to have is that I can plot the PZ map of G and you'll see that I'm going to get a figure which has a representation on the S plane of where the poles and zeros are. So you'll see that the pole here, or sorry, the zero here um, has a value of minus 1, and then the poles are located at these complex conjugates. All right, uh, minus 2 plus 2i and uh, minus 2 minus 2i. All right, and then the last thing we were asked to do is find p of minus 1. All right, um, of course this is very simple to do by hand, but we want to uh, set s to be equal to uh, minus 1, and then we're going to just take uh, p times s to the power. Two. That's actually not what we want to do. We want to take uh, p of 1 times s to the power 2 plus p of 2 times s plus p of 3. All right, we're just going to evaluate uh, the polynomial. Of course, we could use a for loop. We could do however we wanted to. But since this is a relatively short one, uh, it's not too bad. So if s is minus 1, then I should expect uh, 1 times 1 uh, plus uh, 4 times minus 1. So that's uh, negative 3. 
uh, plus 8, which gives me positive 5. And so that's my whole answer. And that's pretty much all there is to uh, solving that little example in MATLAB.